Another proudly we hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Lee Tracy, and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart, and hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Our play takes us deep into the African jungle for a tale of treachery and murder. Five people are on an expedition for a fabulous fortune, an expedition that ends in death. I'll be back for the first act after these words of importance from Ken. The United States Army wants to meet its manpower requirements with the greatest number of volunteers. It needs men and women who know what they want and want to follow interesting careers. So visit your nearest Army and Air Force recruiting station and list today. And now with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Harvey Bowen, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of The Interlopers. Greed is a disease that can spread its evil poison through the heart and mind of man until his being is so filled with it that it controls and motivates his every action. A man who is greed-stricken will go to any lengths to satisfy his insatiable desire to take more and more. And like a dope addict, the more he takes, the more he craves. And finally, in one way or another, his own greed destroys him. Now, these African natives are of an extremely primitive type. They receive few visitors from the outside, and but for the services of a splendid guide, who is well known to them, we never would have been able to visit their village and, of course, take these pictures. Now, this next slide is a very unusual one. It's a color photograph of their god, whom they call Moko. This tribe, like most, keeps no written records. Everything is handed down by storytelling, and as far back as their spoken records exist, Moko has been their deity. Now, what is so appealing to the imagination is that this idol, in many ways, resembles the ancient god Moloch. Moloch, you'll remember, was worshipped by the Babylonians, the Persians, as well as a good many other early peoples. The question that comes to mind is, how could an idol such as this find its way into the jungles of darkest Africa? Well, here is the slide. You will notice I that... I beg your pardon, Dr. Uh, Cole, but what are those different colored stones? Well, uh, Mr. Stark, <laughs> I'm afraid you've spoiled my little surprise. Uh, those stones, ladies and gentlemen, are the great red eyes, the breast, the navel, the wide belt, are rubies and sapphires and diamonds. The biggest I've ever seen, but probably the biggest in the world. Yes, on that idol rests the king's ransom. Uh, how much would you say they were all worth, Dr. Cole? I really couldn't say, Mr. Gore. Fabulous sum, I'm sure. Uh, doctor, it seems a little odd to me that in all these years no one's attempted to do, uh, take some of these stones. Well, of course, Mr. Stark. Not too many people know of their existence. And even fewer people would know where or how to locate this particular tribe. Anyone seeking them without proper authority or introduction might find himself in very serious circumstances. Mr. Bowen, our guide, did tell us a story about a man who did manage to find the tribe and live with them and gain their trust. Thereupon he stole one of the rubies and fled. No one ever knew what happened to him. But, as you can see, Moko has both his eyes. Dr. Cole, I certainly enjoyed your talk. Really fascinating. Uh, what did you say the name of your guide was? Bowen. Harvey Bowen. Most unusual chap. Well, for some time now, I've been planning a trip to Africa myself. Of course, I'll want a good guide. Could you tell me where I might reach Mr. Bowen with a letter? Why, yes. If you write him care of the Hunters Club in Nairobi, you'll be sure to get it. Thank you. Uh, there's... 
Just one other thing. Oh. I'm most interested in the study of ancient idols. Would it be possible for you to lend me for a few days the uh, photograph you have of the idol those natives worship? Well, what's it called, Molo? Moco. Uh. <laughs> I'd be glad to, Mr. Stark. Uh, keep it as long as you like. It's an unusual story, don't you think? Very unusual, Dr. Cole. When our Bowen people come, uh, they over there by door. Ah, oh, good. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, we'll be in the gun room. Mix us up a picture of something cool, will you? Hey, here's one of Uh, you, uh, Mr. Stark? That's right, you're Bowen. Yeah, how do you do? Pleasure. This is Mrs. Stark, Mr. and Mrs. Gorm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I think we'll be able to talk better in the gun room. Right this way. Quite a club you've got. Surprises most people. They don't expect to see anything like this out here. Did you have a good trip down? Oh, fine. We flew all the way. Right in here. More uh, privacy in here. Uh, quite a collection of guns. Oh, I take it you're an enthusiast, Mr. Gore. Oh, call me Fred. He's a I... very enthusiastic person, my husband. Very enthusiastic. Now listen, Carl. Uh, Mr. Bowen, what preparations have you made? Well, I've made all I could, but you neglected to tell me just what you wanted my services for. I assumed you'd... Probably want to do some hunting. Oh, no, isn't he smart? Carla, be still. Yes, I think we would. Maybe a little exploring. We'll leave it up to you. Plenty of time. We can go anywhere you'd like to take us. Say, what about visiting that tribe that Dr. Cole spoke so much about? Oh, what tribe was that, Fred? Oh, you know, the, the ones, the... Oh, I can't remember the name they went by. They, they worship some kind of an idol. The Nagwalis? That's it, the Nagwalis. That's all right by me. Sounds like a pretty good idea. What about it, Bowen? Are uh, you... Like to visit the Nagwalis, huh? I'd just love to visit them. Simply love to. It's a long trip. Makes no difference. It's a hard trip, too. I don't know about the women. Well, what about Mrs. Cole? Well, she was used to that sort of thing. Oh, Helen and I are used to all kinds of things, too. Will you be still, Carla? I'll have to send word to their chief and ask him. Why don't you do that like a good fella? How long will it take? day or two before we get an answer. How do you send such a message, Mr. Bowen? By drums. Oh, how exciting. I love drums. I love their beat. What did Dr. Cole have to tell you about the Nagwali's idol? I don't remember too well myself. What was it, Fred? Oh, you remember, Jack. There was something about it being related to the god of Moloch. It seemed like quite a tale. And did he tell you anything else about it? I think he said the natives worship it. Very sacred, all that sort of thing. That's right. It's sacred to them. Every bit of it. <laughs> you think you fooled him for a minute. What was that tribe, Fred? Listen, if you don't oh. shut that face of yours... I'll I'm... shut it for you. You big, brave men, you silly fool. Jack, what is it you're planning to do? Fred, we never should have brought that. I know, I know. Well, let me tell you boys something. You'll have to get up awfully early in the morning to put anything over on board. He knows what you're after just as well as I do. Ow! That's to remind you to keep your mouth shut about what you know. Bowen suspects nothing, or he wouldn't even agree to take us to the Nagwalis. Now, you keep your face shut, do you hear? I won't forget that. What is it that Bowen does or does not suspect? Why are you three keeping me in the dark? I should have known you wouldn't have come all the way out here, Jack, just to look around. What is it? I want to know. Helen, don't ask questions. As far as you're concerned, you're going on a trip just for the fun of it. Just for the fun of it, you understand? No, I don't. And if you don't tell me, I won't... You won't, won't what? Did I remind you about a little matter with which we're both familiar that concerns your brother? No, you needn't remind me. Good. And now let's all go down and join the noble Mr. Bowen and Carla, dear. A word of caution. Keep your mouth shut. So wild. <laughs> Do you like it? I don't know. I think it frightens me. I'm too used to civilized things. Mm, not necessarily civilized. You mean modern mechanical advantages. You mean you consider these natives, these, these men at the paddles, as civilized? Mm, all depends on the definition of the word. They're primitive, of course. Some of their laws are primitive and harsh, too. But they live by their laws. Few try to break them. That's more than can be said for uh, so-called civilized man. I suppose you're right. What are the drums? Jungle talk. They're passing the word about us. Oh. About all sorts of things. Have you done this sort of thing all your life? Since I was a youngster, born out here. My folks are missionaries. I see. Tell me about this Nagwali tribe we're going to visit. What's the matter? Why are you looking at me like that? I 
think you know all about the Nagwali tribe. Or at least as much as you want to know. What do you mean? You can tell your husband that I wasn't taken in by the supposedly casual manner in which you people decided you'd like to visit this tribe. I don't understand you. All right, Mrs. Stark, let's just forget it. You can tell him anyway. No, I tell you, I don't know. I know they're up to something. The three of them, that they wouldn't tell me what. Won't you please tell me? They're probably hoping to steal some of the jewels that adorn the Nagwali's guard. Oh, no. But why, if you know that, are you, are you taking us there? I think your husband and the Gores and you, if you're not telling the truth, need to be taught a lesson. We'll visit the Nagwali, and I don't think any one of you will be tempted to take anything that isn't yours. The great silent hunter, Harvey Bowen, sits alone before his tent, smoking his pipe and looking into the dark mystery of the jungle. You should be in <laughs> bed. Tomorrow will be a rough day. I'm a big girl. Yeah, I can see. Good. I want you to. Why did the natives leave us? This is Nagwali territory. They're not allowed here. We have to go the rest of the way alone. Oh, how nice. How long will it take? About three days. Why don't you kiss me, Harvey? I think you'd better go to bed, Mrs. Gore. A gentleman. I knew there must be one left somewhere, and where should I find him but in the jungle? <laughs> I could tell you some very interesting things, Harvey, if you were nice to me. I'm not interested in you, Mrs. Gore, or whatever you have to say. Now go to bed. Did you like that, Harvey? You... No! Let go of my wrist. Let me go. Let go of me, I said. Gore! Gore! Wake up! Mm, what? Oh, what's the matter? Here's your wife. I suggest you see that she gets to bed. Uh... I'd hate to see her get hurt wandering around in the jungle. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. Come in here, you... <laughs> Quite a girl, huh? I guess you could say that. Women can be a nuisance. So I've found. Probably better if we had left them behind. That one's pretty well done in. Another three days, you said? That should do it. We're in their territory now? Yep. They've been watching us for some time. Watching us? But what for? I thought we were to be welcomed. We are. It's a custom of theirs not to show themselves or greet us until we arrive at their village. But why watch us, then? To make sure that no harm comes to us. Of course, uh, Mr. Stark, that can work both ways. What do you mean? Well, let's suppose you had in some way offended them taken something they valued highly. How much chance do you think you'd have in getting away? Lee Tracy, starring in the role of Harvey Bowen in the proudly we hail production of The Interlopers, We'll return for the second act in just a moment. But first, I'd like to offer a real opportunity to young men and women everywhere. Wouldn't you like to get an early start on a job, a job that gives you the chance to perform definite service to your country? Well, you can have that job and that chance right now in the United States Army. And at the same time, you'll be rendering essential service to your country in this critical period. And you'll get some of the finest technical training in the world in a wide variety of fields. So don't let opportunity pass you by. Visit your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station and get all the details. Your country needs you now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now, with your star Lee Tracy in the role of Harvey Bowen, we present the second act of The Interlopers. <laughs> It's a mixture of different things. Meat is antelope. Oh, it's really thrilling to be sitting here like this, having a jungle feast and savages all around us. Does the Wanda see 
speak English? Few words. You'd be surprised how much he understands. What do you mean? Well, he's an excellent judge of character. You find people here are extremely sensitive to feelings. They have a kind of seventh sense. They can tell when someone's unfriendly toward them or means them some kind of harm. He's been staring at us since we sat down here. What's he doing, sizing us up? I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> well, I, I, let's hope he likes us. Say, uh, where's this idol I've heard so much about? Down there at the far end of the village in a little clearing. If you like, later on, we'll stroll down, have a look at it. Good, good. If it's all right, I'll take some pictures of it tomorrow. Perfectly all right. Oh, uh, I'm afraid when the feast is over, there's something pretty brutal in store for you. What do you mean? It'll be all right for you and Mrs. Gore to leave, and I suggest you do. Go in your tent and stay. What for? You and Gore and I'll have to stay here. They'd be insulted if we left. What are they going to do? The one thing these people despise more than anything else is a thief. Murder is a minor crime compared to stealing. Tawanda told me they'd caught a thief, one of their own tribe. Tonight, in our honor, they're going to punish him. I, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't eat too much if I were you, Gore. They're very ingenious in their methods of punishment. And the people of our sensibilities, it's pretty horrible to watch. They take their time. Oh, how horrible. What did the man steal? Oh, no. That doesn't matter. The fact that he stole it all is enough. Well, can't I watch, too? Can if you like, but I don't advise you to. What you hear will be bad enough. I... I need a drink. I've never seen anything so... Get hold of yourself. So it was horrible. So it's over. So forget it. We've got things to do. Maybe... Maybe we... We'd better not. Maybe we'd better forget the whole thing. Listen, you, you're in this thing to stay. But you saw what they did. He got caught. We're not going to be. We're not even going to steal anything. We're just going to replace something. Now, listen to me. While you were sitting in here shivering, Carla Bowen and I had a look at the idol. It's just like the picture, only better. No one watches it, and it's set off by itself. We shouldn't have any trouble at all if you made the dummies right size. I had to make them from that photograph. It wasn't life size. Don't it... give me any of your excuses. Where are they? In this bag? In the bottom. All right. Dawn's the best time. I've noticed there's usually quite a bit of fog. We're we'll... not going to do it tonight. Keep your voice down. Yes, we're going to do it tonight. And then we're going to sit back and relax and spend a week or so here before we leave. You're mad. Suppose they find out. If you're as good at making imitations as you claim, frankly, I've never seen better. They'll never know the difference. And that goes for Bowen, too. But why don't we wait until the last night? Or why take the chance? We want no suspicion. And besides, we don't know how much of an opportunity we'll have later. They're all beat to the teeth tonight with their celebrating. Oh, what a celebration. Don't drink too much of that stuff. I'll wake you at dawn. Now get some sleep and calm down. Get some sleep? Ha! <laughs> out as easy as pie. Your dupes fit perfectly. You're a real craftsman, Fred. Hurry up, will you? Keep your shirt on. All we've got left to do is a belt. The fog's thinning and it's getting lighter. Here, take this and give me that uh, lovely phony gore diamond. How can you joke? Idiot! Do you know how rich we'll be? Now the other one. Come out like butter and they fit in like blocks. Someone's coming! Get down behind the idol. Now they'll get us now. Shut up. I don't hear anybody now. Who's an animal? Wait! Nothing but your nerves. Come on. Let's finish this and get to bed. Hardly seems he's been here ten days, and now tomorrow we're leaving. Enjoyed it? Oh, it's been quite an experience. I've liked it all. Oh, except for the first night. Well, that was unfortunate. They're really very simple and friendly people. Yes, I've seen that. Mr. Bowen, I... I guess you were wrong about this. Uh, we both know that I wasn't wrong, Mrs. Stark, but mm. as I said, I think being here has changed their minds. It'd be a pretty impossible thing to do, you know, mm. and 
<laughs> Hardly worth the risk. My husband has never been afraid to take risks. Yeah, your husband is no fool. No, he's no fool. He's a... I beg your pardon, Mr. Bowman. I think I understand. I'm sorry. You, uh... Maybe you better get to bed, Mrs. Stark. Good night. Good night. Very touching scene, my dear. You look so handsome together. Go to bed, Claire. <laughs> Well, my little Freddy, what are you awake? You're all tucked in bed for the night? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Such big, brave men. They come all the way to Africa, all the way out here to swipe some mighty hot rocks. And what happens? They get cold feet. <laughs> big, brave men with cold feet. What a couple of four flushes. Still got your pretty paste jewels here in the bag? Leave that bag alone. What? I said, leave that bag alone. I mean, you... If you don't keep your mouth shut, I'll swear I'll throttle you. Okay, lover, I take it all back. Carla will behave. Carla's scared. How far away from the river? Five... Six hours. How do you know the boatman will lead us there? Word was sent when we left. They'll be there. Now, now, watch your step here. Are we still in Nugwali territory? Oh, no. We left that behind a long time ago. Hey, how about taking a rest? I'm beat. Yeah, hey, good idea. How about this clearing, Bowen? It's all right. Wait. <laughs> Wait till that python goes on his merry way. Huh? Look at the size of him. I never even saw him. Okay, now. Rest your bones. Uh, I... I wouldn't drink too much of that, Mrs. Gore. I suppose a man wouldn't have a chance out here without a gun, food, water, things like that. Wouldn't be much fun. You know, Mr. Stark, I've already mentioned to your wife that I knew your real purpose for coming out here. What did I tell you? And she neglected to tell me that. Well, what about it? I'm glad you didn't attempt it. I thought you'd let your reason guide you once we got in a village. Well, you can't blame us for wanting to give it a try. It was quite a temptation. Yeah, I can imagine it was. Still, hardly worth risking your life for. Hardly. At least it was an interesting and enjoyable experience. No education. I think we all gained something by it. I'm sure you did. Tell me, if you knew what our real purpose was, why did you take us? As I told your wife, I thought you'd change your minds, and remember, I I work for a living, too, and you're paying me. <laughs> Very good. You're worth every nickel of it. Isn't it wonderful to be friends? I guess we'd better get moving, eh, Bowen? Right. Oh, this pack is heavier every time I lift it. Oh, oh brother. What? What the devil? Stay away from them, Bowen. Make them afraid, you clumsy ox. Put them in my pack. Oh, you managed it after all. Stay right where you are. I won't hesitate to shoot you. Yes, we managed it. The idol now has some remarkable duplicates, but not worth very much. I'm sorry you had to find out an unfortunate accident, you poor, stupid fool. Not really. After all, as far as the Nagualis are concerned, their idol hasn't been touched. You'll never know the difference. And Fred's dupes will look just as good to them. Keep your hands still. Jack, certainly... Shut up! Well, all right. And you don't deserve to share in it, which makes me just as happy anyway. You're not going to kill us all, are you? Oh, just you, you sniffling no! little... No! You killed him. Not really. Incapacitated is a better word. And with reason. You'll be slowed up considerably now, taking care of him. Oh... Uh, one thing more I'll do before I bid you all goodbye. You'll assist me, Mr. Bowen. Pick up those packs and throw them over that cliff. Isn't he ingenious? Lie still, Fred. Stark, use your head. If you ever get lost in these jungles, those stones won't do you a bit of good. You're extremely thoughtful of my welfare, aren't you? But I know the way to the river. Once I get there, I'll be safe. Now pick up those packs. Helen, gather up the guns. Everything goes over the cliffs. You'll leave us here with nothing. With nothing but the jungle lore of Mr. Bowen. Maybe it's good enough to save you, maybe it isn't. I don't know, and I don't particularly care. I got what I came for. You realize if we get back, we'll have the law on you? Ah, that bothers me. Find me first. All right, enough of this talk. Over the cliff with that stuff. 
and make it snappy. What are you thinking about? About him? About my life with him? I'm just glad it's over, even like this. We're in pretty bad spot, aren't we? Pretty bad. If it weren't for Gore, I could get you to the river. I have faith in you. I know you'll get us back. Thanks. It'll be rough. Gore may not make it, but I'll get you out. Now, try and get some rest. Now, there's an odd thing about the Nagwali's idol. Last time I visited them, it looked like this. But now, it looks like this. You'll notice resting in front of it is a human skull. Its top has been removed, and it's all hollowed out inside. What's even more amazing is that within the cavity of the skull are the exact duplicates of the precious stones that adorn Moko. My guide, Mr. Bowen, seemed very reluctant to talk about it. The whole thing, you might say, is clouded in an air of mystery. star Lee Tracy will return in a moment with a word about next week's show. But first, here's a special message to the young women of America. We all know that good health certainly contributes to the maximum efficiency of our fighting forces. The Army Nurse Corps and the Women's Medical Specialist Corps are calling for volunteers to serve overseas and here at home. Nurses, dietitians, physical and occupational therapists are urgently needed. If you are qualified in any of these special fields, here's a splendid opportunity for you to serve your country today. Commissions and interesting assignments are available to those who qualify for the Army Nurse Corps or Women's Medical Specialist Corps. Write or wire the Surgeon General Department of the Army, Washington, D.C. for full information. Do it today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail. Presented in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. Proudly we hail stars Lee Tracy. The Interlopers was written by DeWitt Cop. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarneri. Proudly we hail is directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking. And here again is your host and star, Lee Tracy. Next week, you'll follow a manhunt and watch the hunter become the hunted in a play that's as timely as the latest news broadcast. It's called The Unconquered, and we hope you'll be with us. Goodbye. <laughs>